Go video. What's going on? Go video. Here we are. We have the uh, Canud Albert uh, sculpture. Um, with that being said, I'm going to tell you the story and how I found it. Um, I did go back to the guy's house. He was having another yard sale a week later on a Saturday at five at night in... I don't know. He randomly had the extra pots. Here's the extra pots. Here's the extra pots. This is, uh, um, ponytail. So we get the back of the ponytail. Uh, we have more of the points for the, for the back here. And we got another leg. So... Uh, it's pretty hot out here. I'm gonna make my way to the truck and I'll tell you the story about it. It's a uh, pretty interesting story. Ain't gonna lie. There's some little, uh, roadblocks and deterrence along the way for me to actually get this, because I'll just explain the story, you know, <laughs> and you can, get, you can get the gist of it. But, um, I'm gonna try and get some period glue period glue means like 70s era glue so if we're looking at some of this glue here it's definitely not tight bond this stuff looks like it was almost done with like an elmer's type an elmer's type of glue i don't know it's white so if we get some white glue i know tight bond makes the best stuff but we want to keep it of period so that nobody will really overly notice the repair. I'm going to be fully disclosed about the repair. But. Just, that's just that's what I'm thinking. i um, not going to fix any of this really. That, that you know some of these little damaged points here. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it. It is what it is you know. So let's get into the story. Get into the story. Uh, let me jump in the truck. I'll fire it up. We need some air conditioning. It's hot out here. Um, I did have to stop here to measure these barrister cabinets right here. Uh, I got two people wanting to buy this whole setup. Uh, I think like like five or six hundred. So uh, I had to do some measurements on that. I do have a whole another one right there that I will list later. Um, yeah, is what it is. So let's get into the story. All right, here we are. We're back in the truck. I'm gonna find a little shade and we're gonna talk about the story of how we found it and what happened. So it was it was it was kinda of interesting and I'm gonna say a couple things that are gonna you know give you ambition to randomly find a uh, you know rare piece of art or sculpture or some other crazy thing like that. <laughs> so um, with, with the points of how I found that is I don't, I do have a target when I go like yard sailing and stuff like that. I do have a target, but I really, really, really play off the signs. I like freestyle. I like freestyle yard sailing. I see a sign. I'm taking a, I'm taking a right. Um, so I try to do that the most I can. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of how that, that's kind of how that prevailed. So it was a Sunday, no, it was a Saturday, and I believe I was done yard sailing for the day, and I was just, I, I, I went home, I took a nap. Um, I got up around like 4.30, and I was like, I'm gonna go get a coffee. I wanted my bougie coffee, bougie snickerdoodle. Yeah, that's good. So I wanted a coffee and I had to go uh, down a certain road. I saw this sign because I'm driving by it and I saw the sign and I did a turnaround. Um, and I was gonna be late on getting my coffee because they close at five. So it's kind of imperative that I, want, I wanted my coffee, you know? <laughs> so I had to make the decision. Dunkin' Donuts coffee and hit this yard sale or really good coffee. So I went for the Dunkin' Donuts and the yard sale. 
um, I stopped at the guy's house and it was kind of it was kind of weird it was like 4 30 5 o'clock it's starting to get a little dark you know sun's going down I pull up I'm in the I'm in the tornado I don't even have the van to go pick it so I knew that I can only buy a certain amount of things and certain size of things <clears throat> so uh, I pull up the guy's got stuff all in the yard but there's nobody there so I start making a pile and um, this guy in a truck pulls up and has like a you know a massive pile of stuff in the back of the truck I'm like hey now this is this is like first pickings of a clean out <laughs> nice so I'm making my pile I'm literally picking stuff out of the guy's truck as he's taking it out I'm going and eh, I'll grab that put it in my pile I'm like hey where's the, you know how much is all this stuff got a jumping off point and uh, he's like oh none of that stuff's mine I'm just cleaning it out the uh, guy will be right back so I'm waiting like 10 minutes for this guy to come back I got some pretty good stuff I don't have a sculpture yet I got some pretty good stuff though it's not the greatest it was kind of more interested in a couple of these brass bells that he had and um, he had a 14 inch uh, diamond blade that goes on to a, a demo saw and a diamond blade that goes on to a demo saw is is probably like a hundred to two hundred dollars used they're probably like 300 new so I'm like all right nice I got I got a two hundred dollar item right here I'm ready to stop buying, you know? And uh, I, I like it like that, where I, I have one solid item and then everything else is just, like, let's just go for broke, you know? Let's spend 200 bucks, go for broke, because I mean, I'm, I know we're gonna get 200 back here, and then hope that we're gonna hit a couple gems that's gonna, you know, generate some funds. That's, that was my technique. I usually use that technique a lot. And, um, The guy wasn't there. So I waited for the guy, he came, and he walks right up to the pile, and I'm like, uh, yeah, hey, how much is all this stuff? He's like, this ain't for sale, I'm keeping this, this ain't for sale, that ain't for sale. I'm like, what the hell? So he literally took all the bells, <laughs> uh, anything that was made of brass, and then he took the diamond blade. I'm like, great. I'm left with this mediocre pile of tools, basically. Very mediocre pile of tools. And uh, I had a couple planer blades. And, and these, this is kind of the part of the story that, that it started to get a little weird. Because he already like started pulling stuff out of the pile. And I was, I was kind of like, guy, are you having a yard sale? I, I mean, I ain't going to lie. I was busting the balls the whole time. I was like, guy, you're going to have a yard sale or what? You, you, I made a pile, you shit's out in the yard, and then I, I go to try and buy it, and you're like, oh, I want to keep this, I want to keep that. I'm like, it's like literally the worst <clears throat> situation that you could get in with somebody that you try to buy stuff off of, which basically they have sentimental value where they think that they can use some things. And hey, I mean, I don't like buying things that someone else can use because they're going to make money with their item or whatever. That's cool, I understand. So, I didn't gripe too hard, but I kind of was, I kind of was busting his balls. <laughs> Cause he, only cause he had it out in the yard. It's like, what the hell? And um, so I moved on and he's like, uh, oh, I got more stuff in the garage if you wanna go in there. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, buddy. I'm like, whoa, whoa, buddy. Let's, let's size up what I have here. Give me a quote. Because if you're way too high, then I'm not gonna be able to freaking buy anything off of you. All right, so uh, he sizes me up. He quotes me out a price of uh, $70, which mm, I ain't gonna lie, wasn't that good. It wasn't that good for 70. So I went in the garage to hopefully try and uh, double down, I guess you could say. Um, maybe there was something better in there. Oh, in the in the wood the wood planer blades. So I had these wood planer blades in the pile. There was like six of them, and the guy grabs all six of them and he's like, uh, "I have a wood planer that these go to." And I'm like, uh, "Your wood planer only needs one blade." 
And he's like, oh, I don't know the size. And I'm like, is there anything else you want to take out of the pile? I'm like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, he, he's like, well, what are you going to get out of it? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to sell the blade for a dollar. <laughs> That's it. I told him my operation too. I was like, yeah, I resell, blah, blah, blah. So I'm in there in uh, the garage. He opens the garage, I go in the garage, and it's pretty much the first item that I saw. It was in the back, it was kind of leaning, like on a wall. And uh, I was like, hey, what's up with that wood thing back there? And he's like, oh, it's a sculpture, some guy, yada, yada, some artist, artist sculpture. And uh, I was like, how much? And he's like, 20 bucks. I wanted it out of the house. 20 bucks. I'm like, okay. So I pulled it out. I noticed it had some damage. And I was I was fine with that. I'm like, this thing's pretty cool. So I get it out. And um, I rummaged through there. And, and there really wasn't much really else in there, you know? There was some stuff. But honestly going back and forth with this guy on what he wanted what he had for sale or what he wanted to sell and yada yada it, it was almost more of a bother you had to hold the thing up and be like hey is this for sale yeah 20 is it okay is this for sale yeah 10 is this for sale no so I didn't want to like give any of my hopes up by being like is this for sale no 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 so honestly, I was already content with what I had. And um, I was kind of like, I gotta hightail it out of here. I gotta, I gotta check out, pay, and get out of here. I gotta get this thing in the truck. I didn't know it was good or not. I just knew it was, it was decent enough that I should probably leave before any decision making is becomes different. And uh, so I pulled it out and I'm starting to check out and he's like uh, 140 for everything and I'm like I'm like they only added like a couple things like a planer and then the the sculpture and he's like 140 I'm like well you said 20 for this sculpture and he's like oh I want 25 I'm like <clears throat> I'm like guy you said 20 so I pulled it out and now you're saying 25 and he's like alright fine 25. He's, he's like, give me 125. So, I mean, he, he was still taxing me $10, I swear. And I'm like, alright, whatever. You know, I didn't want to gripe. I had a couple small items. And uh, I was like, alright, fine. I, I, I had to hightail it out of there. I loaded the car and I walked back over to like kind of say bye and give one more scan because the guy pulled up with the truck and was unloading some stuff again I grabbed a um, a Christmas tree stand like a it was like a clay type uh, Christmas tree stand it's nice and uh, paid him 10 bucks for it so I, I, I head over to the Toronado and uh, I'm like I gotta get out of here and I know what's gonna happen I'm gonna I'm gonna flood the car I already know so I'm trying to stop the car and I'm pumping, I'm flooding it. You know, I'm like, oh man, I gotta sit. I, so I had to sit for like 10 minutes. And uh, I was thankful you could come back and tap on the window and be like, hey, can I have a, some of my stuff back? It's just like, what the hell? And also when I was in the garage, the funny thing too was when I was in the garage, um, I'd hold something up and the guy's like, uh, pull, pull that on out. And I'm like, well, is it for sale? And he's like, oh, let me take a look at it. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, I ain't, I ain't cleaning out your garage. I ain't cleaning out your garage. No, it ain't happening. I, I started leaving stuff on the ground. I was like, no, no. And uh, yeah, he kept trying to make me do work. I was like, that ain't happening. <laughs> and um yeah, I, 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 I got it home and, you know, I made the video. I didn't really figure out who the artist was um, yet. So I believe that was, I believe that was a Saturday. So I, I went home and I planned for a flea market on Sunday. So I, liter I literally loaded the van right after when I got home. And um, 
I put the sculpture in the truck to take me to the flea market. I did try and sell it at the flea market. Uh, I was asking $4.50 for it. Mm, I think like three people were mm, slightly interested. Most people were not interested. And um, my flea market's not the particular area to get rid of something like that. And I mean, there's a couple of antique dealers, but they don't really do a lot of like art or specialty items. And I try to go with odds. I'm sure there was a couple guys that would have bought it, but they didn't want to pay 450 for it. So that's fine. Um, I took it home. I made the video to get a little more eyes on it so that I could get an idea of the artist, because I couldn't find anything on this artist. It had a little paper label on the back of it, and uh, I couldn't read anything. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I could read it, but I couldn't find anything on this on this guy. And I was in uh, Matt's live, and um, CK Postcards was chiming in, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure your name, but I really appreciate you. Uh, giving me any info on it. It was pretty cool. Um, so they've found some of it with the, probably particularly with the points. It's probably the only way to really determine it was the points of the sun because that guy did use a lot of that um, material for a lot of sculptures. And uh, she was familiar with it. She dropped the name. She said that I had it a little wrong. So whoever wrote it up, wrote the paper label had the name wrong and I searched the artist and all of his art started popping up so that was cool and uh, yeah I mean perceived value I mean I don't really know it's uh, it's art so it's, it's whatever anyone wants to pay for it um, I don't I don't think I'm gonna take anything less than five I mean, that's going to be my, like, ultimate low, or I would just keep it, and, um, we're going to, we're going to start it out at 20, and I'm going to hold faith that it's just going to sell. I'm not going to overly keep decreasing the price or anything. I'm going to start it at 20, we'll sit on it for a year, and if it doesn't move then it don't move you know uh and then we'll reevaluate it but yeah we're gonna we're gonna do it for the long haul and yeah i mean uh it's rare it's one of a kind it's a one of a kind piece it's supposed to be in a museum at this point now this artist is a danish artist and the sculpture was found in massachusetts which, which is interesting in itself. Uh, the artist, which I think is kind of cool, is um, he's a trash picker. So he would go around on trash day and pick up uh, used Danish furniture, uh, mainly hardwood furniture, mainly Danish furniture. And he would take the furniture and just make all kinds of weird, crazy, uh, anamorphic, um, anamorphic type animal sculptures. Very interesting. Um, I, I just thought that was really cool. And he's not, he's not a, um, a logged artist yet. He, he's kind of coming up in that. Uh, his sister owns the majority of his estate and a lot of his art and there's a lot of people trying to push her to push it into um, some sort of gallery where he can get the recognition and obviously the price of the um, pieces will go up but mainly a lot of the people just want the guy to have this recognition because he's a, not a registered artist and he should be um, because a lot of his stuff goes from like 200 and up kind of and a lot of it would be like found on Ruby Lane, First Dibs, um, sites like that. 
not really. There's a couple pieces on eBay. I mean, there's a twenty thousand dollar piece on eBay. So, yeah, some of it's on eBay. Some of it is sold on eBay. Um, a lot of the collectors. I'm just giving you all my tidbits for my research. Uh, a lot of the collectors of this particular artist in this particular stuff, they try to snipe it by people not knowing the artist in the correct name of the artist. So his name is commonly uh, misspelled. Go figure. Because <laughs> um, I almost gave the sculpture away for 450 because of a misspelling um, and not overly doing enough research. I did take Google pictures and Google Lens and everything and nothing, nothing would generate nothing of any anamorphic style because he didn't he didn't overly do big round shapes like that. There are some dwarf and elf type sculptures but he did more like sleek anamorphic like odd shaped stuff not very not a lot of symmetrical work um hence the nose where he made the nose like really uh long and uh, awkward i think he purposely did that to make it more of his style of anamorphic with the ears and stuff like that um, yeah, so weeks late, a week later, uh, I am literally driving down the same road and I see the yard sale sign up again. And I'm like, is this guy having another yard sale? And I know he, he's moving. He had to do, he had to do probably multiple yard sales. He had a lot of stuff. So um, I'm like, yeah, he's probably having another yard sale. So I swung by because I knew I was missing parts for it. I was missing some points and some pieces off the back. And he did say there was some parts in the garage somewhere. And uh, I went by, pulled over, knocked on the door. He had all the stuff in the yard. Like it was a, you know, free for all yard sale at like five at night again. And he saved all the parts for me. I don't know if he like saved them for me. He just saved them. Uh, he said, oh, I was hoping you would come by, uh, you know, I saved the pots, blah, blah, blah. He probably wasn't hoping I was going to come by. He was probably going to burn those pots and throw them away. But, uh, he charged me 10 bucks for the rest of the parts. So he ended up getting his $10. And, um, that's it. I found the parts, you know. So, um, we're going to find of period glue and we will get the proper clamping and whatever else we need to get it done and we're going to find of period nails we'll have to take a look at what kind of nails he was using and we're going to try and rebuild it uh so keep your eyes out for a live i'm going to try and do it on a saturday and we will rebuild the canud albert Rising Sun Einstein face sculpture. That's what I got. Um, so, point being, freestyle, yard sales, take the turn. If you feel the inkling that it's, that it's it does its mystery, you should take the turn. All right. Don't overly stay focused on your beeline or your plan because sometimes plans are meant to be broken. And by breaking the plan can lead you down to that road of a $20,000 sculpture or $10 sculpture, who knows. But uh, yeah, <laughs> very odd, very odd little story and I don't know, I'll keep you updated if it ever sells. Uh, thanks for watching and come back. Come back for more odd, mystery, crazy items that I find. <laughs> thanks for watching, bye. Peace.